Chodesh Tov. And uh, today is a very special day. It's also, it's also uh, we, we start a new book in the five books of Moses, the fourth book, which is called Bamidbar, which again, it re refers to the, 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 the desert, like the, uh, the, the desert, when Mount Sinai was given, when the Torah was given in Mount Sinai, it made the desert popular. So you refer to it as the desert. And I explained earlier today also why is it that God chose to, to give the Torah in the desert? Out of all places, he could have given it in, in Jerusalem or, or, or some great monument. Why in the desert where there's seemingly no one, you know, it, it's ownerless, it's, it's, it's barren of inhabitants. You know, and there's no real uh, test, no monuments, no people living there. And the answer is that it was given in the, the in the desert precisely for that fact. That it was given because um, that every individual has the right and the ability to to claim the Torah and to learn the Torah. It wasn't given to any particular people. It wasn't given pe to people, uh, great scholars in the ivory tower, you know, studying Torah. It was given to each individual, passed down from generation to generation, mm -hmm. Jew and non-Jew alike. You know, it, it was given. For, 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 the Torah was given for the sake of peace. And we know that God's name is, is, is written in the Torah, and God's name is Shalom, complete, which means peace. First of all, when, uh, let, let's pray, let's start off with this class to, to pray for all the violence and all the, all the craziness what's going on in Israel at the moment. There should be an end of, you know, people should, should, uh, should actually come true. What Isaiah says that, you know, they shall beat their swords into plowsheds, they're pruning, the, you know, and it should actually happen today. There shouldn't be any more violence, any more deaths, any more, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very sad, you know, that people have to uh, live under these conditions. Anyways, so the idea of shalom, peace, means that uh, God gave, gave, put his name into the Torah. He gave the whole Torah for the sake of peace. We know peace, by the very definition, means complete shalem, something wholesome, something uh, uniquely uh, organic, wholesome, um, harmonized, that's complete. You know, as we know, the world is consisting, uh, consists basically of two levels. There's the physical world, which we all, everyone knows the physical world. And then there's the, the spiritual dimension, the spiritual world, which exists. We don't see it. And the idea is to combine the two to make it uh, harmonize the two, where the spiritual becomes physical, and the spiritual and the physical becomes spiritual. In other words, we we harmonize the two, and that's why when when it says that one one of the the, the uh, major events of of um, of the giving of the Torah was that they should come, they should bring about this harmony, this unity, this unison. You know, and how is it done through through Torah? Torah is, is a divine wisdom and, and, and divine light, which permeates everything. It's able to, to permeate the world. It's able to affect the world. And, and it came down from a very high, it's God's wisdom. It came down to, from, from God himself, his wisdom to permeate and, and to transform the world. Just as water comes down and, and takes a desert and, and, and makes it blossom, so too, Torah is like compared to water, it goes down from very high and it's, and it's here to, to make the world blossom, to take that, that desert, that midbar, like we said, the, 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 uh, the desert. And you know, it says by Mount Sinai, in the time of the giving of the Torah, the, the whole world stood still. Not only the, the world, not only the, the people and the animals, but even the, in the rocks, there's no echo. And it was uh, the desert was transformed into an oasis of greenery, flowers, and so on. And the answer is that it permeated the Torah, the divine, the divine word of Hashem, of God, permeated everything. It permeated the, the animals, the people, even the, even the the botanic, even the the rocks. Listened. We think of a rock. Oh, it's a rock. Doesn't really have any any spiritual uh, dimension to it. The reality is everything in the world, every, every phys physical being in this world has a, 
spiritual dimension and is able to, to by us doing the right thing, we're able to affect the world and to elevate the world and create that, not elevate the world that, that, that we, we, we travel above the world and we, and we don't live in the world. On the, on the contrary, elevating the world in Judaism means bringing Hashem, bringing the Torah into everyday life. It means every aspect of your life is, is permeated, it's illuminated, et cetera, et cetera, through Torah. And it means everything you do, whether it's changing your tire, taking out the garbage, whatever you have to do, it's, it's, it's all godly. It's not just when you're praying and you're studying, everything is godly. Because your, your very existence is godly. You're not just living the physical, you're living a, a spiritual entity. And that's what it's about. It's about bringing, the, the, bringing uh, elevating the physical to spiritual and bringing down the, the, the spiritual into the physical and bringing a harmony to make it a, a harmonious and make it, make it a, not, not in conflict, but rather in, in, in unison, working together. And this is what, this is what the, the universal no code really represents. It represents a, a, a path, a, a, a illumination, a, 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 a way to bring down that divine light into the physical world and to bring it down into the mundane, not just when you're praying or you're doing a good deed, into everything you do. When you live a, a life which is, which is illuminated with Torah, then your whole existence, your very existence becomes in a, a whole nother being. And it's interesting that when we do when we do that, when we live a life of Torah and we bring down God into the world and we elevate the world, we're actually acting godly. We're becoming partners with God. How is that possible? See, when God, before he created the world, it was just God. He was infinite. There was no time. There was no space. There was only Hashem, only God. He took, he created a, 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 a place where they, they, they could exist time and space. And in that time and space, he created a, a world. And it's a whole lengthy com discussion, which you're not going to go into it. How, how, do you, how does something infinite create something finite and so on? But, but the bottom line is he created a finite world. He created, he took from nothing, meaning from spiritual, from nothing, meaning which is really everything. And he created a physical, he created a physical being, a yesh, meaning a, a physical object, a chair, a, a rock, a, a flower, whatever you want to, you, me, any, any, any physical object. Now, when we take that, that, uh, that physical object and we do good with it, whether it's a dollar bill, whether it's a, whatever our physical object, and we, we in turn elevate it, we take it from being physical and we make it in, in, into a spiritual entity and that's eternal. So we're actually mimicking God in the opposite direction. If, if you understand what I'm saying, you know, we're actually, so this is the whole idea of, of, of the Torah. The Torah is here to bring shalom, to bring peace, to bring unity, and most importantly, to bring a dwelling place, to make this world a garden, a, 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 to permeate the desert, to bring, the, to make the, des the desert or the, the world blossom. And this is really what it's about. It's about taking the Torah, using it, utilizing that divine, that divine, uh, I don't want to call it water, but you know, like that divine energy, that divine know-how and bringing and, and turning the world, take, taking that desert, taking this, this evil world, which seemingly evil, it's not evil. It, it's a facade, but we have to reveal that facade and reveal the inner goodness that exists in everything. So the idea is that um, God created a world which seemingly is, is separate from him. There's evil, there's, there's, there's detachment, there's no, there's no harmony. But he, in reality, God and, and the word of God and the very Torah is everything is about harmony. And, and the idea is our job is is like like gardeners or planters or uh, people to reveal the inner goodness that exists in the world. It's not about 
trying to to fight evil. Because evil is just that, it's a non-entity. It's there for you to overcome it and to not look that way and not be tempted by the challenge and to focus on what you, on your mission, your, your purpose. The purpose that everyone has, man, woman, and child, Jew and non-Jew, is to create a garden, create a, a to take that desert, the midbar, and transform it into a dwelling place, into a garden, an oasis. That's our job. That's our mission. Every one of us partakes in that mission, Jew and non-Jew alike, men, women, men by putting on tefillin if they're Jewish, um, women by doing lighting, lighting the Shabbat candles, whatever, whatever mission, whatever, you know, Judaism is not, um, a man is, does women's jobs and women does, uh, it, there are unique individuals that have unique, so the idea is that we're coming up to, 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 to Shavuos. We're now in, the, in Rosh Chodesh, which is the month where we received the Torah on Mount Sinai 3,333 years ago. This is a triple three, not triple three, it's four times three. It's a very special day when God revealed himself to all people. It wasn't just to reveal himself to, to, to uh, uh, one person or a prophet, I saw God in my... Uh, he appeared to everyone, not only to everyone, to every living being to the entire world. It says that in the time of the giving of the Torah, by the way, there won't be another Martin Torah. The receiving of the Torah was once a cataclysmic event which affected the world and it'll never happen again. And it's interesting that when God appeared himself and said, I am thy God, and the entire world stood still, not only did it stand still, it, 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 it heard. And it says there was no echo. There was no echo. Normally when you have a, a sound and it bounces off a rock or a mountain, it comes back as an echo. Over here, God's word permeated. It, 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 it infused the entire world. Everything. There wasn't, there wasn't a, 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 a being, a rock, a, a bird, a person, an animal, everyone stood still because at the end of the day, everything is created by God. And it wasn't just created thousands of years ago. It's recreated every second. That's one of the, the, the uh, you have to learn about that. There, That's a separate whole another topic, which is, which I have a shir in Tanya, which is called Shai Yechid Ramuna, the gates of, 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 of unity. And that talks about how God takes an infinite being and creates a, uh, God being infinite creates a finite, but that's a whole nother discussion, and we're not going to go into it. But the bottom line is that every being, hum, now humans, animals, botanic, everything, inanimate objects, everything heard God and saw God. So the world is really everything that exists in the world is godly. It's up to us. What what is what is Torah? Torah is called. The life of Torah and it's called Torah or the light of Torah. Life and light. Two two this this distinct titles. What is it, what's about what's the number one life we spoke about? It's like water, it brings life to everything, it rejuvenates everything, gives everything its force. Also, it's called or light. Because the Torah brings clarity, brings clarity what's good, what's not good, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, where you could go, what you could eat, what for instance, if you had a pitch black room and you had a perfectly organized room with a table, chairs, place to sit, the lounge, et cetera, et cetera, but it was pitch black, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have the knowledge to know where to sit, where to lounge, where to do it. You, you, would, you would have no clarity. Whereas if you put on a light, you switch on the light, you, you, all, the, all of a sudden you have clarity. You know, oh, here's a table and chair. Here I could sit, here I could sit. Yeah, relax. You know, it gives you, it gives you a sense of perspective, what to do. That's why Torah is referred to, referred to as Torah or the Torah, the light of Torah, and also Torah's Chaim, the life of Torah, because this gives us a means. The universal Noahide code is a means for individuals to live by. It's not that God wanted us to live in the dark and figure it out by yourself. May it's been two minutes. You know. He didn't want us to figure it out by itself. 
he wanted, he gave us a, a, a unique path. And the Torah is that guiding path. And it's withstood 3,333 years from every persecution, from, from the Inquisition to, to every, every challenge, even in America today, where it has challenges, it's, it comes in a different form, but there's also challenges. And it, withstanding all the challenges and, and, and it's maintained, it's, 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 it's given life to those who, who, who've lived by it, even God forbid if, if they, if people did have, did die our Kiddush Hashem on, on sanctifying God's name. But the bottom line, it's, it's given, it's allowed the, the, the Jewish people, for that matter, the Torah to serve as, as a light and to hold that Torah high. And non-Jews also have the ability to study certain degrees of, of Torah and also to, to partake in God's commandments, mitzvot. It's, uh, you know, and, it's, and, and, and also to be part of this mission, this purpose. And that's what it's about. It's about realizing that we were charged with a mission, every single one of us, men, women, child, Jew and non-Jew, smart, tall, you know, everyone was charged with a mission. The mission is make this world, figure out, take this world, take the darkness, take the rocks, move it away, let the flowers blow, go, bloom, you know, let's let's create an oasis. Let's make this desert bloom. And it's really about just that, taking, realizing that we have the ability and the, and the, and, and the privilege to, to, to take that, to, to transform the world. And let's hope and pray that by each of us accepting the Torah, realizing you know, that, that the Torah was given, like I say, it was given for the sake of peace and was given for the sake of unity. And you know, the message of Torah is so crystal clear. It's, you know, people today are looking for a purpose, for meaning. And you have the right, the left, this, that. The Torah is such a such a breather. Number one, everything in the Torah is is it's, it makes sense. By the way, when you study the Torah, you're actually studying God's wisdom. It's the ultimate relationship you could have with God. Why? Because when you do a commandment, you you are it's like a great professor. You know, to give an example, a great professor tells you, uh, "Bring me a cup of coffee." Okay, so now you have a connection to that great professor. But what about if, if you start thinking like that professor? You start understanding his wisdom and, his, and, and, his, and the way he thinks and you're studying his, then you really, it's a whole different relationship. So the idea is to understand that the Torah, um, when you study Torah, it's something to be understood. We don't accept Torah, you know, it's, on one hand, your commandments, it's, it's interesting. I just spoke about this today as well. On one hand, the, the, the Torah was given in, in a, on a mountain called Mount Sinai. Now it's interesting, it's, called, it's a mountain called mountain, but Sinai, it was the smallest of all mountains. So on one hand, it represented um, humility. All the other big mountains were saying, oh, the Torah should be given on me because I'm great, I'm big, I'm this, I'm, I'm 59, I'm K2, I'm this high. It had humility. That's the first prerequisite of studying Torah and getting close to God, is humility, to realize you know, that we are mere mortals and we have to accept the divine word and wisdom. Humility means that we leave room for Hashem. We, leave, we, we, we back off and say, listen, I want to hear what Hashem, what the divine wisdom has to tell me. And that's really what it's about, having humility and having, realizing that you could, that there's something to, you can learn a lot more from having humility. So that's, on one hand, Sinai was, was the humblest of all mountains, but nonetheless, it was still called a mountain. Why? Why if, if God wanted to show humility, he could, he could have given it on the plains. No, not, not on a mountain. Why did he choose a mountain? Because at the end of the day, um, to have, on one hand, you have to have humility, but the other hand, you also have to have a certain stance, a mountain. 
that you're not just a pushover. You can't just, you can't just, you have to have a certain um, backbone. You can't just, to be, to, to withstand the test of time, you have to know that Torah is real and you have a backbone for it. The, God is real. The universal Noah code is real. And you, you're going to stand up for something that's right. You're not going to go with arrogance, but on the other hand, you're not going to be a, 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 what we call in Yiddish, a shmata, means a rag. You're going, to re, you're going to stand your ground. So that's the two opposites that exist in, in, in Mount Sinai. On one hand, it did have, a, it was a mountain. It did stand high, higher than the plains. The other hand, it, was, it had humility. Realizing that all the greatness that we have to have comes from Hashem, comes from God. All the wisdom is not ours. We're merely a, 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 a vessel. Okay, so I, I, now I've, I said we're going to allow questions, and I think Jody over there is getting a little, so we're going to open up the mic, and I think we'll, so I want to just thank, thank I want to just give everyone a blessing that we should have a Chodesh Tov, we should have peace in the world, we should have unity in the world, and the world should realize what the Torah is, and they should send troops to, to protect the, the, the Jerusalem and the Holy Temple and the Holy Torah. Because if they realize the spiritual and the, and, the, and the blessing that it possesses, the world will, would, would and this is gonna happen when Mashiach comes, when the redemption comes, the, this facade that we don't, that we have now, will cease to, to exist, and we, we won't have to deal with the, with the challenges. Okay, we're gonna open up to some questions, and let's hope we see Mashiach now. <laughs>